I'd like to present to you a man who wisened the world up about what the blues is all about. They call him Big Joe Turner, the daddy of the blues. And I'd like to set a tempo sort of like this for him to bring him on so I can give him to you. What makes a hit song a hit? Well, Mike McCready may have the answer. He is the founder and CEO of Platinum Blue, a company that says it can look at the mathematical patterns of songs and determine the song's hit potential. He says they can tell whether a song is likely to rise to the top of the charts. I did shake, rattle, and roll. We call this music X-ray because it shows the music industry, their music and their market, in a way that they couldn't see it before, in the same way that an X-ray shows a doctor, his or her patient, in a way that couldn't be seen before. So you put essentially a wave file, or the, you know, what comes right off the CD into, into the computer. And the computer is able to break down and isolate you know, the beat, the melody, tempo, cadence, you know, the full spectral signature of this, of this song. What we get back are a series of scores that we, uh, that we send to the music label. The first score is called a hit grade, and it's a, it's a score from 0 to 1,000, and anything above a 700 would be considered to be a song that conforms to one of these optimal mathematical patterns. That is telling you that the song falls into one of these hit clusters. And of course, that isn't sufficient for a song to be a hit. It also has to sound and feel like a hit, and it also has to uh, be promoted effectively. But falling into the hit cluster is a necessary uh, condition for it also to become a hit. So why are some songs not hits? The next score that we provide is called a curiosity grade. And what that means is sometimes it's not enough for all of those three conditions we just mentioned to be to be true. The the cluster that the song falls into should also be active. That means there should also be other hit songs in the market at that moment that conform to this particular pattern and that are, are being successful. So sometimes people describe a hit song as a brain itch and you scratch that itch you know, in a way that you listen to the song over and over again. But after a while, you're, you're done scratching that itch and you want to move on to another song. It probably conforms to different mathematical patterns. And what we're able to see is that not only do we do that as individuals, but we do that as a market. And the market isn't tuned in to all of these 60 potential mathematical patterns at one time. So the, per the curiosity grade is showing you, is this pattern active right now or not? And anywhere between the 600 and 1,000 range would be a good score on that. We didn't invent the fact that these hit songs conform continuously to these optimal mathematical patterns. It's just something that we've been able to observe. But we've seen uh, similarities between hit songs by U2 and compositions by Beethoven. Uh, the relationships are often very surprising. <laughs> This is Flora Lichtman for ScienceFriday.com.